Uh, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's really such a, a pleasure to be here with all of you. <clears throat> That's how we kind of wanted to open this morning, is to just thank you uh, for allowing us to be part of the community. Uh, Tim O'Reilly and the folks at O'Reilly have been long-term friends of mine in the company, um, and I think they've always taught us to really sort of think different. Uh, and so instead of sort of a traditional vendor talk, you know, we made some exciting announcements today. Uh, but instead of that, we wanted, we wanted to sort of just give a quick talk and share a few thoughts we had as, as sort of members, sort of co-conspirators in this data community. And we just wanted to share three basic things <coughs> this morning. Number one is we really wanted to take a little bit of time to try and acknowledge uh, this sort of remarkable, extraordinary time that I think all of us find ourselves in. Uh, and as part of that, uh, the second thing is to really then look at uh, the amazing people that are transforming this, this business and ourselves, people that have actually inspired us. Um, and so these are people that are really outside of Green Plum and EMC. And the third is maybe to just put forth a few ideas of what we think is gonna be important for us as a community in 2013 and going forward. Uh, just quickly to sort of kick a few things off about myself, just as a little context, uh, as I just mentioned, I was the co-founder of a company called Green Plum back in 2000, and uh, I'm still part of the organization today. We got acquired by EMC a little over two and a half years ago, and we sort of formed the basis of the big data division. Uh, and it's really been this very, very rewarding journey and ride. Um, and when we started out, I think we had sort of the same conception about innovation that a lot of entrepreneurs do, that you sort of have an idea, you have some technology you want to build and get a lot of talented people, and at some point down the road, there's going to be clear success. Uh, and for those of you guys who know the journey of Green Plum, really over the last decade or so, you guys know it's a very different story. And that our path to success was anything but a straight line. And we had a lot of twists and turns and a lot of challenges, mostly a lot of times self-inflicted. Uh, but over time, we have found a way to do some things we're very proud of. And so this path to innovation was the result of a lot of hard work and talents from our team and luck. Um, but as I sort of look back to one of the really, you know, sort of remarkable things that we were lucky to be a part of, and I think everyone here is today, is that we're just living in really, really extraordinary times. And that kind of luck, I think you can't just presuppose. One of the favorite quotes I had uh, all the time is from Warren Buffett. They really talked about saying like, hey, if I was born a thousand years ago, you know, I would have been eaten by lions and tigers. And Warren was saying, I can't run very fast. I can't jump. Um, and it just turned out that capital allocation turned out to be a valuable skill set when I was born. Um, and I'm so really, really lucky, right? Um, and I really believe that. You know, the time that we are living in together is really, really extraordinary. If you think about the technology vectors that are coming together over the last handful of years, these are things that we've come to take granted for, but the advances in microprocessors, in storage, in networking, in virtualization, these things converging in what some might label the cloud, that's a really big deal. And although we've been talking about mobile for, for over 10 years now, you know, mobile's reshaping all of this infrastructure, right? It's changing the way we think about all of computing and, and how uh, sort of citizens connect to these systems. Um, and Mark Andreessen, you know, really, really smart guy, obviously, um, has had a nice coining and phrasing of a sort of slightly different variation of that, which he says, sir, look, software is eating the world. Right, it's reshaping every single industry that we know. We just saw sort of its effect on gaming. All the traditional industries itself, software is eating the world. Um, sometimes I actually think about this comment and competing in the database industry in the world. Sometimes I actually think uh, Larry Ellison might be eating the world. You guys are just laughing a little bit. It's kind of funny. Um, and uh, if he's not eating the world, he's certainly eating Hawaiian islands these days. But um, the reason why I think that's a sort of significant comment, Mark's comment, is when... The, when software is eating the world, that means the world's getting instrumented. And so the reason why, obviously, we're seeing this explosion of data that's been building for a long time is because machines are generating all this information, right? And the, the amazing thing about being here today uh, is watching the evolution of this industry I think we're all excited to be a part of, and it's been building, right? Wired was one of the first publications to sort of cover this, you know, back in 2008. That was a cover article we were really excited about when The Economist and Ken came out with this sort of special issue about the data deluge. That was a big deal. Now you really can't turn to a mainstream media publication today that's not talking about this industry that we're in. So getting the world to talk about big data is really, really great, and it's, it's great that I think it's moving, uh, as was talked about before, from a literal definition to more of a symbolic definition. The fact that this sort of concept is on the tips of everybody's tongues around the world is important. The other dynamic in 2013, though, is uh, money is changing hands, 
You know, we had the first strata here two or three years ago, uh, and it was a slightly smaller audience, but you really started to see the emergence of business, and a uh, slide emerged there. But what you saw on that chart, it was a report from McKinsey, is that the big data industry uh, is sort of projected to go grow to about 16 billion in 2015, right? So we're living in a time where real money, real transactions are, ha- are happening for this industry. It's a really, really big deal, right? So the second thought we said is, well, we're living in this amazing time. When we were here at the first strata, we said, well, what do we need from this industry? You know, what would be really helpful to see over the next few years to sort of keep it going? And we put forth a few simple concepts about things that we felt were gonna be important, Uh, Let's see if I can click that. There we go. Um, And some things that I think, you know, uh, at looking back, we've just made amazing progress in 24 months. The sort of role of data scientists, right? That was going to be a big deal. We wanted government to step in and offer funding and resources and support and investment in these initiatives. Uh, Industry, all the big companies in the world and enterprises adopting this technology in the area that we're really passionate about, Silicon Valley, startups. Lots and lots of startups in this data industry. Um, And when we were looking back at all the progress that had been made over the last several years, what we realized, the one fundamental thing that is consistent is that this is all about people, right? This sort of notion of being part of a community. There are really, really people that are doing amazing things that are well outside of Greenplum and EMC. And we actually asked our team, our data science team and our technical team to come up with a short list of the people we wanted to highlight that have inspired us to keep doing what we're doing. And we came up with this really, really long list that I can't go over today. It sort of became almost like a hit list of your favorite sport athletes or your favorite bands and sort of a debate ensued. So I'm gonna give an example of just 10 folks that don't work for Green Plum, don't work for EMC, but we really think are doing special things in the world of data today. Uh, the first is Jake at Datakind. I don't know if he's here uh, this week, but uh, this notion of bringing data science and combining that with nonprofit organizations and social and civic causes and sort of bringing data sets together and, and data science horsepower to solve meaningful problems, really, really inspiring work. Uh, the next one is John at Cornell. Uh, one of our data scientists called him the algorithm god. Right? But he, he's someone that, uh, as professionals, we look up to because he's been driving research that probably had more influence on network theory. His HITS algorithm has sort of reshaped how we think about some of these machine learning techniques. Really, really, really important things. Um, the White House itself, um, you know, the big data initiative that was announced, over $200 million in financing and support of big data initiatives and research, funding Michael Franklin's AMP Lab, these kinds of things. The Obama administration taking a really, really proactive stance to make a real difference in the big data community, something that keeps us excited that there are exciting problems to be solved. Uh, Andrew and Daphne was another one where obviously sort of coming out of the computer science department in Stanford, but really bringing data science and technical education to the world. How we do democratize all this knowledge that we have about this emerging markets. Coursera is really, really inspiring. And that was sort of the segue we started seeing is that the people that we really admired and wanted to work with and had worked with, they're out there creating amazing companies in, them, in and of themselves. Uh, Jonathan Harris was sort of really the first data artist and data scientist uh, that we saw doing really um, inspiring work. He, he founded his own company, the many of you guys know, called Cowbird. And how do you tell stories in a more thoughtful way on the web using data and using social collaboration? Really important things. Um, and a lot of our really close friends at Greenplum that have helped us, they're now doing things that inspire us in turn. Joe Hellerstein was one of our closest advisors. He was at Berkeley leading computer science, taking a hiatus to start his own company called Trifacta, about to do really exciting things I'm sure you guys will be hearing about in the coming years. Ben Werther led product management for us uh, for many, many years, has founded his own company along with John Eshelman, uh, doing pretty amazing things for BI and analytics on Hadoop. Uh, Todd Papuano is a guy that many not know who was part of Green Plum many, many years ago. We first started in 2000, right? Has done on to Teradata and Yahoo. Started his own company last year called Continuity and I think driving a lot of innovation on where analytics and big data systems go. Mike Driscoll uh, is, a, is a dear friend and was the first data scientist we probably worked with outside of Green Plum and really started to shape our li- a lot of ideas about how important this community was really, really going to be. Inspired to see the things that he's doing uh, at MetaMarkets today. And the last one is Stephen Hillian, the, the, the gentleman who actually built uh, our data science team at Green Plum is now running his own company called Alpine Data Labs. Um, and, and delivering a lot of breakthroughs as to sort of democratizing this and allowing more data science to happen more easily. When you sort of look back, you say, wow, all this is happening is the result of individuals, right? All of us in this room and outside really sort of pushing the industry forward. And that's really, I think, what's necessary. 
Uh, Tim O'Reilly invited me to hear this talk about a legendary technology investor named Bill Janeway, and he, w- wrote, an al- he wrote a book about doing capitalism in the innovation economy. It really talked about to say like these big, big shifts in humanity. They require these sort of opposite end of the spectrum. They take long-term, sustained, duration uh, <coughs> investment, really substantiated by the government to have big technical breakthroughs. And then you need the speculative markets of private equity capital and entrepreneurs to actually bring those to life. And I think we could look back at 2013 and say, wow, we're living in this extraordinary time and all of these amazing people have the wherewithal to do these things and push the industry forward. And so the last part of the talk then is to really say, okay, you know what, this is exciting. There's still a lot left for us to do, right? What else do we need? Um, and one of the best quotes that I've seen is, is from Jeff Hammerbacher, <coughs> and I, I, I really love this. It was talking about why he left Facebook to start Cloudera, which has obviously done really terrific things for the world of Hadoop. And he said, look, the best minds of his generation were kind of thinking about how to make people click on ads. Now, clicking on ads is not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination, um, but the really great thing is that in the world of data, we all know there's lots of other really important challenges to go solve. And so this is just a quick list that we pulled from the data science community, uh, from our friends at Data Science Central. Um, And there's 60,000 people that have registered intent to be a part of this community we're all part of. Um, And it's just a quick list of these things that I thought were really funny to share. Uh, Data science curious dude, right? A catastrophe risk analyst. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds like it's a good thing. Um, MD. I think this guy just wanted to know that he was an MD and MDs care about data. Uh, sales amplification consultant, I have no idea what that means. Uh, this one I really liked, uh, this is the first time I ever heard this term, a neuroscientist with an eye towards data integration. Uh, that's really kind of interesting. A nurse working on uh, solving problems, focusing on HIVs, inspiring stuff, looking at developing countries, right? Uh, a Rubyist, a SEMweb enthusiast, data geek currently hacking. Right, the fact that that role could be hand in hand with a hedge fund manager who's here to make money on data uh, is really, really interesting. And in the end, if you look at this, whether it's defense or mid-level, you know, sort of mainstream companies in the middle of the country, uh, we're all big data crunchers, right? We're all here to solve big problems. Um, and that's what I think the sort of last word that I wanna leave you with, what do we need in 2013? The word's collaboration. And that's not a pitch for social software or Yammer for the enterprise or these kinds of things. Uh, When I talk about collaboration, I mean it almost on the same level as a a word as powerful as democracy. It's really hard. Collaboration at this scale we're talking about is really hard. So the first piece is around collaboration around software. That's gotten complicated. Open source software is not the open source of Eric Raymond and Richard Stallman of 20 years ago, right? You have $100 million investments by venture capitalists expecting a billion dollar return out of an open source project. There's gonna be lots of conflicts about how that project evolves, right? That's why I think we're gonna see the resurgence of standards. Standards ensure compatibility and interoperability. We've gone a long way with HTTP, TCP, IP, and Ethernet. It allows great products to come to rise. Competition is actually a good thing. Collaboration and competition are not Um, in contrast with another. (coughs) Education, there's so much things. If I look at the content here today and the level of understanding we need across the industry, we're gonna need to continue to invest in educating ourselves and the broader sort of constituents out there. And finally, collaboration around data. Lots and lots of collaboration around data. And the reason why I think that's important is this, this global data set that's going on, my data set, your data set, it's all contributing to this unified data set around the world. And in that data set, Uh, I really believe are the insights to some of the biggest world's problems, Uh, whether that's healthcare, energy, local economies, the global security, the future of education, the insights and some of the breakthroughs we've been looking for as a civilization are in that data set. And that's what keeps us inspired and and happy to be a part of the community uh, today. So thank you very much.